<clears throat> so we're going to talk today about uh, Textract. Oh, I jumped ahead a little bit. So Textract is going to be the uh, AWS service that can uh, automatically extract either written or typed uh, text and get that as data that you can consume in <laughs> downstream um, in downstream processes or as a part of a, an API calls later on. We can talk more about that. But um, let's dig right into it. So AWS, uh, if you've ever had a conversation with uh, with wherever we've gone over some of these uh, services, you know we always work to, to kind of bring the broadest and deepest set of uh, of, of all of those services that we we offer, and it's no different with Textract. We're focusing on the machine learning capabilities and wanting to provide that to builders. Uh, we're going to start on this slide at the very bottom. Uh, so builders are going to actually be able to develop on the framework of their choice. Uh, they're going to be able to use the managed experience in Amazon SageMaker, or you can use the AWS Deep Learning uh, uh, machine images, and those are going to be fully configured with you know latest versions of uh, the more popular uh, machine learning frameworks. Uh, as you go up, we're going to go look at actually SageMaker. SageMaker is going to provide uh, developers and data scientists the ability to, to build, train, and, and deploy those machine learning models at scale. Uh, it's going to remove the complexity from each of those machine learning workflows and let you kind of focus and more easily deploy your machine learning use cases. And you can use SageMaker for everything from like predictive maintenance of with computer vision uh, to predicting custom behaviors. But typically we see about a 10 time improvement in uh, productivity for data scientists when they're leveraging SageMaker compared to building uh, building from scratch. And as we're working our way up, let's look at that top layer for our, our AWS's AI services. And those are going to allow developers to kind of easily add intelligence to any of the applications that they're being uh, that they're, they're they're developing with very little need for machine learning skill sets. And so those pre-trained models are going to provide, you know, ready-made intelligence for those applications and those workflows. And you can take the time to personalize for the customer experience, forecast business metrics, uh, or even translate conversations. So I, don't, I think it's a pretty obvious statement to say documents are everywhere. Um, whether we're capturing documents internally to, to convey information, or typically if you're getting information from external customers, uh, being able to categorize and kind of uh, provide a standard approach to, to getting that information is critical, but obviously taking it to the next step and, and getting a, a digital uh, footprint or a digital value out of that is kind of where Textract comes in. So typically you have, in, in today's world, you're gonna see manual processes. That's gonna be the most common kind of a, a initial approach to, to reviewing the documents. And if you've ever paid someone just to do document uh, review, it, it's it's not a very cost efficient approach. Um, as you move kind of further right, you're going to get more traditional like OCR tools, and those tools are are really great, but they're really simple. So if you're just needing to get the uh, the text out of a specific area, that's great. But getting context or getting more value out of what that data means, it, it's it's limited. And it's also nothing but just kind of a dump of text. So you're not gonna have any sort of formatting or really get any of that additional value out of the, the way the actual text is provided or presented to you. And then also when you start moving a little bit further, think about like screen scraping where you're, you're getting a little bit more uh, context or templates um, that you're following on a regular basis, that's going to require a lot of overhead to, to maintain. And if there's any change to those templates, it, it completely throws your business process out the window. So with Amazon Textract, you can take advantage of computer vision, natural language processing, and a bunch of other digital uh, machine learning innovations that go well beyond those traditional OCR technologies. And this is going to have the benefit of helping customers extract not only the text, but also the structured data elements. Think about like key value pairs or tables 
or even cells within the table. And this is going to be true regardless of if this is a printed document or if it's a handwritten document. So it re really regardless of what medium you're looking at, you'll be able to, to get these values out of it. And I'll talk about some of those use cases in just a little bit. But uh, customers can do pretty much uh, any of this, uh, any of the, the business value that I'm talking about, customers can jump straight into it with very little machine learning expertise at all. Uh, it's really easy to use managed APIs, and um, AWS's documentation is 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 a great point of reference for you to kind of um, uh, to get started. It's going to really reduce the manual effort and help get customers to out of the business of like building those templates and into the the business of actually making value or getting gaining value from the uh, the templates that they're or the the data that they're getting out of the the text. So one of the biggest benefits, specifically with TechStrike, though, that's going to be accuracy and the, the processing times. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the accuracy coming up at, or at the very end of this. But um, when we're talking about it at scale, uh, you'll, you'll definitely see the value quickly be realized. And a lot of people first thought would be uh, data in the cloud. Oh, no. So if, if you're still in that mindset, I want to kind of put your put your mind at ease to let you know that regardless if you're talking about a highly regulated industry or if you're talking about a, a very kind of routine industry, we've definitely had experience with them and more than happy to dig into to some of these um, use cases. No, oh, excuse me, I, I jumped over one. These are the customers. As a part of TechStrike, there's also uh, a deep uh, partner network. So as you start to implement the the um, the TechStrike service within your environment, there's plenty of competent uh, partners that AWS works with that can help you realize that value. Enough of the marketing stuff, though. I'm done with it. All right. So uh, let's kind of look at how this applies to individual verticals. Um, obviously, with financial services, you've got an unlimited number of documents that you, you're signing, agreeing to, providing information around. Um, and when you get into healthcare and life sciences, you're talking about the sensitive data. And um, also, like I said, from a regulatory and compliance perspective, you're, you're good. Um, and then when you start talking about manufacturing and retail, you really see a huge pickup of kind of operationalizing these routine processes that uh, is just time consuming from, from the end user perspective. And so using these specific use cases, you're really able to, to get beyond just uh, seeing the text and seeing the data that's being captured. It's also going to let you um, improve the overall experience for the people who are working with the data but the biggest value is going to be the decision making. Once you're able to, to automate and kind of make these decisions routine and, uh, well, uh, automated, <laughs> it makes your life a lot easier. There are a couple of examples uh, I, I'm going to flip past. I want to specifically focus on Anthem. Um, they were actually able to, to automate away millions spent on extracting sensitive data. Um, they ended up using TechStrike to digitize, digitize and automate the claims process. And they did that all while maintaining the compliance and regulatory requirements dictated by them or dictated to them. And the biggest uh, value out of this was they were actually able to automate 80% of their entire claims processing workflow with, you know, a stretch goal of 90% in, in uh, future iterations. So we really do strive to make TechStract as uh, the TechStract integration as easy as possible, and we're we do that by providing um, APIs that really require no prior machine learning experience or expertise beforehand. Um, AWS is deployed across multiple regions. Uh, or me, AWS has multiple regions where TechStack is deployed, and that's going to be uh, pretty worldwide from North America, Europe. Uh, and Asia Pacific regions, uh, but of course, you know, as we grow, that that always continues to to scale uh, as well. Keep in mind that also scaling out and scaling uh, 
across those regions does put you in a position by leveraging Textract. You're not limited to just a, a single region or single ge geographic. Um, Textract, we hear back from customers that it really helps them improve their efficiency of the business, pro business processes, specifically increasing throughput, which is usually tied, um, tied up by, excuse me, which is usually a, uh, a person who is tied up doing the work. And so they're able to basically remove that human review process in most cases and trust that the outcome from the Textract service is actually uh, robust and, and usable. So just as a quick little aside, uh, accuracy is obviously important. Uh, this is a really cool study that was put on by Princeton. There is a document set called Old Bailey. It's a 400 year old document set that Princeton used to go through and um, basically test the efficiency or the accuracy of the, the larger cloud providers. And AWS showed the lowest median error rate. Just to kind of to, to touch on this a little bit, that 400 year old document is a handwritten, obviously, document. So uh, it definitely provides some visibility into not just typical um, text-based kind of analysis, but definitely does give a, a much better uh, accuracy rating uh, than some of our competitors. And just to kind of go on that a little bit further, uh, we've got AI Multiple, which is another uh, technology analyst firm. They've done a lot of uh, a lot of depth into the uh, the study and the analysis around Textract by from AWS, and as well as a bunch of the other providers. And you you can see that. Text Act was by far the top performer, um, hitting like 99.3% accuracy. So that was a, another kind of badge or Medal of Honor to put on. And if you're familiar with various uh, technology uh, analysts, you've probably heard of IDC. And IDC identified um, the Vision AI software platform for 2021, identified that AWS was the leader. Uh, both in productivity, end user experience, and decision making uh, or decision recommendations. And so, from that IDC kind of study, um, you know, you can see that there's a lot more to consider beyond just the accuracy of the text. And so, I'd like to, to touch on a couple of methods for delivery, um, keeping an eye on time. I'm going to go through just a couple of these examples and hop across some of the other ones. Some of these are gonna show up in Chris's demo, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them either. The, the main piece from this though, I did wanna bring up is the way that Textract actually uh, extracts the text. So <clears throat> when Textract goes through and does an, an, uh, does an analysis on the document, it's gonna break it down into three different hierarchy blocks. It's gonna be page, line, and word. And then it's gonna provide visual bounding boxes um, and confidence scores for each word and each line and each page. So you'll end up seeing a confidence uh, at each of those levels within the analysis. And those bounding boxes are going to be a really useful visual cue to aid in post-processing, but it's also going to um, provide confidence scores that are going to give customers the, the best input for making a decision based on the results that they're looking at. Um, One of the thing, I, one use case I wanted to bring out as an example from this is when you're looking at a dense text document, like a legal contract, for example, um, it's going to be able to provide industry leading OCR accuracy. And anytime that there is a question or a, uh, a concern about the confidence of its, of its detection, you'll actually be able to dig in deeper and determine if it's a, a false negative or, or, or accurate. <clears throat> So I'm just going to pop through these next couple because I'm going to get Chris to actually give hands on with them, but it's not limited to just text. Uh, we can pull data out of tables and that output is going to provide you page, table, and cell level uh, hierarchy. And so again, just like from the previous text, you're going to have different confidence scores and you can trigger different uh different workflows based off of each each layer or each level within this output. 
Same thing goes for form extraction. With form extraction, it's going to actually um, capture kind of similar to tabular data, and it's going to provide the relationships that you would expect. Um, so keep in mind, you know, you see here, it's it's identifying first, middle, and last name, and then the output is actually grabbing and correlating those key value pairs together. When we're talking about invoices and receipts, <clears throat> there's a, a, a feature within TextRat called Analyze Expense, and that's got specialized support specifically for invoices and receipt documents. So if you consider the number of receipts and the number of invoices that are uh, potentially manually evaluated or, you know, God forbid, re manually reproduced or manually inputted into another system, Analyzing expense is going to actually be geared specifically for those sort of use cases and look to provide uh, outputs that align with those use cases. So in this case, for example, you'll see uh, the first of all, I want to point out the receipt that's in this image is crinkled. There's a little bit of a smudge on it near the bottom, um, but completely ignoring all of that, it's, it put, outputs the data and then provides it in a uh, you know style that can easily be referenced or, or triggered off of down uh, downstream. Another really cool piece with Textract is if you are in the business of getting uh, identity or ID cards um, and scanning, doing evaluations on ID cards, any U.S.-based driver's license or state ID is able to be analyzed with Analyze ID, which is another feature in Textract. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let Chris dig into a little bit more in the demo. The other part that I mentioned a couple of times is taking the human out of the loop. Well, you can't always do that. So one of the things that we actually accommodate for or account for is low confidence predictions that Textract provides and actually includes a human in the loop, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, includes a human in the, in the workflow itself whenever a low confidence decision is detected or prediction is detected. And then the humans can obviously review and uh, provide the answers back to um, Textract and those results get aggregated and then pulled into the client applications where there is a need for that human intervention. So here you can see um, our basic text forms and tables are available in uh, multilingual, English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Uh, the rest of the mediums that I kind of went over are English only, or they're limited to the, the English language. Um, but keep in mind that that as AWS continues to grow, we continue to, to um, provide more uh, features based on the customer's requests. So it's definitely something that we could continue continue to uh, to uh, evolve as we go on. Uh, just for a point of reference, I don't usually include pricing, but because we're talking about a lot of pages and potentially. Uh, a massive amount of, of work being kind of lifted and shifted out of traditional manual processes. I did want to kind of bring up the pricing guide just simply because uh, it kind of gives you some context and some uh, around what to expect. Keep in mind that the first row here is based on a million pages and that second row is based off of over a million. So obviously the more you uh, leverage the service, the, the deeper the discount goes. We've got a couple of resources here that I'll be more than happy to provide uh, as a part of the, the follow-up, but basically uh, we can talk about building a POC with the use case that you've already got in mind, or if you want to contact sales, I'm sure Karna would love to, to have a conversation with you about some of the use cases that we can, can uh, get in front of you. Uh, but with that being said, almost on time, I will hand it over to uh, Chris and let him go with it. All righty, thank you, John. And I'm gonna turn my video on here. And let me share my screen here. The, the first thing I was gonna put up really fast was just um, to kind of reiterate, reiterate what, John, what you just said. And I realized um, that 
to for the sake of the recording, I don't. Um, it doesn't do much good to paste research, paste things into the chat. So I was, I just had a quick slide that I was going to show really, really fast. It just has the resources that um, that I'm going to kind of talk about today. And I know these aren't going to show very well, but I'm just going to put them up there just in case someone wants to uh, use these resources to kind of do what I'm sort of doing here today. Um, and uh, the, the those three resources basically, first of all, uh, creating an account, um, how to create an account in AWS. I realized that we haven't talked too much about that, but it's really super easy to create an account in AWS. It's free to create it and it's free to even maintain it as long as you're not spending uh, um, any hey, money on resources. Hey, Chris. Uh, oh yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, heads up, uh, I don't know if it's just me, but all I'm seeing right now is, never mind. It was, a, it was a white line, it was a white line, yeah. Okay, it, it's back, go ahead. Oh, can you see it? It's not, yeah, you can see it now. Yeah, it's probably my screen was probably uh, pausing there. Um, so um, yeah, so so um, if you don't have an AWS account, you can create one just as a personal account, and like I said, it won't it won't cost you anything as long as you're not spending anything. And as we've kind of talked about before, AWS is pay as you go, so you you just pay for the resources. But like John also said, there's a free tier, and um, and that lets you have a certain amount of AWS services that you can spend, um, and the free tier uh, has sort of different. Uh, uh, characteristics to it, what you get to use in the free tier. Um, and and then finally, I'm going to be working through the workshop and I'll show you that, the text track, the text track workshop. These, these uh, URLs I've got in here, you can just do Google searches on them. They're just as easy probably to find with a Google search as opposed to try to spell these out. But anyway, I've got them in there just in case. So let me now change over to my... Um, other kind of desktop here. Hang on just a second here. Um, now, hopefully you are now seeing, let's see here. Okay, does it, how's that look? Has everybody seen the, um, um, is everybody seeing that it says AWS free tier? Yes. So you can see. Okay. Awesome. So, um, and, and so I just wanted to show you this really fast because this is cool. Um, Amazon, th this page gives you the ability to see what's in the free tier. And so this is, I just did a search in the free tier thing to see what Textract has. And uh, I think John said, um, you get a thousand pages per month of Textract usage. So you can do this um, and spend absolutely nothing. And I'm going to kind of walk through what that actually looks like, but you can actually use this tool to find uh, what other, um, Characteristics or whatever services in AWS uh, are are um, are free as well. So, really, really handy tool for figuring out what's free. The AWS pricing uh, a calculator also does this as well. So, like I said, I'm gonna um, I I'm gonna start walking through the AWS Textract workshop, and we're gonna work on lab number one, the console demo, and um, that. Um, and that's just going to work inside the console itself. Um, so it's just going to be all a, a demonstration ability inside the console. So really super easy to use. You don't have to have any programming skills. There is in this lab, as you can see, there are um, follow on pieces of the lab that kind of go more into deep dives on the probably the next area that you've that you would typically be interested in, which would be looking at, say, um, how to call these services in the um, with APIs. And then um, John actually mentioned this, but the uh, ability to do Amazon augmented ABI, uh, um, AI, so the ability to, to have a human in loop workflow process that goes along with the, um, the, the text tract uh, results. Um, and, um, but, but without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in here and we're just gonna walk through what the actual, um, uh, what the actual uh, uh, demo sort of looks like. I'm going to come over here. I'm, in, I'm now in my console here, and I'm going to just type in Textract here if, and spell it correctly, and you'll see it comes up right there. And I'm going to, um, I, I always say this, John always jokes at me when I say this, but the big orange button in AWS, the biggest orange button is, is a lot of times what you want to do. So I'm going to push the big orange button, and it's going to drop us into the um, analyze document 
uh, portion of the demo in Textract. This is what John actually showed um, in the presentation. And just to kind of orient you around what we're kind of seeing here, um, you've got uh, on in the kind of main body of the page, you've got the actual document that's being analyzed. <clears throat> on the right, you've got the results in a very in various formats, and I'll kind of walk through what those are. Down here at the bottom, you've got a selector that allows you to choose the document that you're actually processing. And you can see here, it's got four demo documents that have been uh, supplied just for this demonstration purposes, but you can upload anything you want to here. So if you've got a document and you wanna try out Amazon Textract on any document that you want, um, uh, you can just upload that document right here in the, um, uh, in this console and it'll do exactly what I'm going to just walk through. It'll um, it'll do the analysis, you get the results over here, and then you can experiment with how well Amazon Textract is reading your particular document. So the first thing that uh, I, I kind of wanted to point out um, now here on the results side is we get in this particular case, when we're just analyzing a, a regular raw document, we've got four uh, tabs up here it, so it's kind of showing the different results in kind of a different way. Here is just raw text. I'll explain what that means. You can look at the forms of the data. So that's going to be the forms in this particular document are the top part here, the um, you know where it's got the name and the date of birth and stuff like that, where they've actually filled stuff in. The table part of the document is this part where it's got the vaccine list here. And then queries is an ability for you to query the document and um, ask kind of questions from that perspective. Um, you can see, like John also mentioned, um, it's breaking in this particular demo, it's breaking the uh, the data out segmented either by line or segmented by word. So I'll show you what that means. So um, uh, another really handy feature as I walk through here is you can click on the results here and it'll show you where it pulled that result from in the document. So that's super cool just for your own understanding and kind of debugging of how this, um, how a text tract is working. So you can see here that it pulled this entire line of text off the title of the vaccine card, sample vaccine record card. If I go in here and choose segment by word, now it's going to break that it, into just each individual word. So it's not going it, to, it's not going to bundle together those, all four of those words. It's just going to break them into separate words. So you see here the results, sample, vaccine, or vaccination record, card, like that. Um, so I'm going to stick to segment by line because that's most likely what we want here. Um, and you can see these are just all the raw um, results. If I click on like first dose right here, it shows you that first dose label or AA1234. It's just showing you where in the document now all those are. So um, the first thing um, that's, uh, oh, yeah, so this is kind of basic OCR um, capability. But if I click over here on forms, now you can see this is where it's kind of, uh, TechStruct is now adding this a uh, higher level functionality on top of just straight OCR. So you can see something that's really, really cool here is that it's pulling and labeling the data as it comes off the um, off this form right here. And it's associating those labels to the data. And I didn't have to tell it this at all. There's no there's no template or anything that I'm that I'm telling the document how to uh, how to read the data. So for example, look here uh, for last name. Um, you can see it's associated the label text last name here with the name uh, Mary. Now that's actually, it's funny the way they actually did this in the document because that, that sort of, I just noticed that, that they've got last screwed name as Mary. The, uh, the data input itself. So yeah, the, the data yeah, input itself is screwed up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually a really funny. good point. So in this just, instance, it's a yeah. great example of the the yeah. data that we're getting out of it. It's only going to be as valuable as the data going in. So that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I just I just noticed it right when I was there looking. That's funny. Um, so uh, the um, but what's but what's really cool about it is it's associating that name Mary with the with this last name label, but this is a kind of an unconventional way of placing that label underneath, under a line with the label last name. So, um, uh, but the the AI characteristics of how TechStract works, it's figuring that out, that that's the, that's the association, that's the, that's the correct association that we want. 
Um, but like I said, I didn't have to tell or label or pre-label the document and say, okay, that little field right there, that's the last name. I didn't have to do that. TechStruck figured all that out on the fly. So, um, uh, so it, 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 it's so very, very cool that it has that ability to just do it without you having to, um, to uh, annotate the document, in other words. Um, next part I'm gonna show in here is the table form. So that's this ability to, again, just understand that this is a table of data. I didn't have to tell it that that's a table of data, just figured it out. And then it gives us the results in a tabular format. Now, obviously, when you're doing when you're making the API calls, you're getting the data back in in arrays and lists and things like that. So, um, but here we're just showing them in this kind of format. And you can see, you know, same kind of deal. I can click on a particular item here, and it'll it'll highlight where that dot, where that came from. But you can see that that TechStruct is figuring out that this is, that this is a, a table of data, and it's actually um, properly assigning the labels uh, to the uh, the the for lack of a better word, the header labels that go with the the first column and the and the first row of data. So um, so really really handy. Just all that undifferentiated heavy lifting that you do when you're working in OCR. Um, all that's so much of that has been taken away for you. So you're wor you're really working on a really cognitive level of how the documents laid out. The last little quick thing I'll point out here is that it gives you it gives you the ability to do these um, kind of human queries. So you can say like what what was the what's the clinic site of the second dose like that kind of thing um and so uh i'll submit that query and you'll see it'll 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 search the document and and come up with an answer um and um and so uh uh yeah, and in this case, it came up with cvs so um that's just an ability um, i'm not sure exactly how that would if that's a a technique that you would use in your program. I'm not sure um, if you would, but still, it's a character. It's a capability that you have there. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to the analyst expense. So, like John said, this is a this is a specific kind of document now, uh, rather than just a raw document that has kind of general characteristics. This is a an expense type document and and you can see we can do kind of two different types there's an invoice and there's a receipt type document we're looking at the receipt type this is be if you're building and um you know say like a expense reporting system or something like that the thing to notice here um same kind of things are happening here but it's now broken them into two different character uh, uh, two different kind of categories the summary fields which are all these fields like um that talk about uh um that in other words, that are not line item fields. So that's really the better way to put it. The line item fields are these fields here, all the all, all the actual line items in the in the receipt, and the summary fields are all those that are not those. So the totals and the dates and the Whole Foods and everything. So um, one other thing that does here that I think is really cool is when you're looking at um, as it's doing the uh, OCR and the and the NLP off of here, what's happening is Textract itself is is labeling the data in a way um, that is kind of intuitive, but where that label doesn't actually exist in the document itself. So if you look here, it's identified that this is the vendor phone, this this New York phone number right here. Well, the the phrase vendor phone or, or yeah, the phrase vendor phone or phone number or anything doesn't even exist in the document. So. Um, or look at like the vendor name here, Whole Foods. It's it's extracted that, so it's it's kind of like saying, okay, well we've identified that this is the vendor name here, um, so you, it doesn't have to have a correlating label in the document that said, you know, vendor name or anything like that. Or you know, you can see down here where it's talking about the totals. Um, well, those actually do in this particular case. Those actually do have totals, but they're like here's the date of the receipt. You can see here. Um, uh that that the date has a um wait where is the date here on the, on the thing um for some reason i'm missing the date but um oh here i'll click on the date right here oh there it is yeah I, I just was missing it so the um so the invoice receipt date so that's what it's labeled the data as so, so that's really really cool i don't have to have a label here to uh explicitly label that data Textract is inferring those labels for you. So really, really cool. Um, 
so um, I'm going to move on to ID now here. This is the ability to analyze government issued IDs, passports, driver's licenses, things like that. Um, in this particular case, they've uploaded a kind of a sample here that, um, and I guess they're doing this because they don't want to upload a actual driver's license. Um, but I have some driver's licenses that I, I downloaded. So I'm, I'm going to show uh, um, actual sample driver's licenses and we'll see how well Textrack does. Um, and over here, the, not surprisingly, kind of like the same deal, you know, it's got all the um, all the fields kind of parsed out. And like I said, also, it's also inferring uh, the label names on them. So you can see here, like in this particular case, um, it says um, it, it's got, you know, say Massachusetts there and, and here that that label that's labeled for you by it by Textract as the state name or, or, or state address or expiration date or any of those things that don't have explicit labels in the document. Um, and um, flip over to passport here, same deal. This probably is not too surprising how that actually works, but but it, but um, you can see that it works on on the Zoels. Now the beauty also is that this will work across states, so you don't have to you don't have to train a particular document on a particular state. So it, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. However, um, you can actually if the if Textrack's accuracy is not perfect, or if there's like specific things that it's not catching, you can augment the way that Textract actually works. That's beyond kind of what we're sort of, um, uh, what we're talking about here today, but it is possible. But I was gonna show you, I was gonna load an actual uh, Alabama driver's license here. And this is a sample driver's license. So this is an actual, um, it's not actual data. It, it, it's, it's all fake data, but, um, but you can see, I just loaded a random Alabama driver's license and it's still kind of grabbing data off of it um, in a way that you'd expect. So we didn't have to go in there and train it on Alabama and um, point out where all the data is. It kind of figured all that out itself. Um, I have another one here too. There's like a, I got a, um, I noticed this, I've never actually seen this, but there's like, apparently there's a sideways Alabama driver's license. This one, I've never seen this, but but um, I loaded this one, um, you know, just to see how Textract would do. Um, same deal. It, ex it extracted data out of the document um, and um, and and also did that inferring of the document label. So really, really handy there. Um, the now the last thing I wanted to kind of talk about here was that you can. And I'm going to flip back just for um, so we can see the actual data. Um, up here at the top, I didn't talk about this, but you have the ability to download the results from this in the um, in in this demo application, and that gives you a zip file of all the results that have come back from uh, the API calls. So under the covers, these are just being done by API calls, and this gives you the ability to download those results. and it And it has a document um, that contains uh, CSV versions of the um, of the uh, tables, it's got the raw text in a .text format, and it's got the JSON responses that came back from the API calls. So all of those give you the ability, if you wanna just um, use this as a way to test out a particular document, but then download the results and see what, how Textract actually responded um, and how it, um, uh, how it performed, how uh, its accuracy and how it identified the, um, the particular areas of the document. So, Really, really handy. Um, so the, um, uh, since we got a little bit of extra time, I thought I would then show you probably the next question everybody asks is, well, then how do I call this as an API? How do I do this in, um, in a programmatic fashion instead of just using this demo application? So that's what, if we go back to our lab, that's this, that's this lab number two. So if you, and I'm not gonna really do too much here. I was just gonna show you kind of what that looks like. Um, but uh, but this is kind of left as an uh, as a exercise for the uh, for the watch for the listeners here. Um, and this is gonna walk through all the API calls or lots of the API calls for Textract to show you how to do it. Now the way that this lab works is it's using a SageMaker workbook, a Jupyter notebook to do everything, but you don't have to do a Jupyter notebook. You can just use the the um, Amazon SD, the AWS SDK 
and you use that to invoke uh, your um, uh, the API calls that you want to just in a straight IDE. You don't have to use uh, a Jupyter notebook. They just did it as a Jupyter a notebook here because it's it's convenient to show here. Um, so in order to use this deep dive here, you uh, you load a CloudFormation template, and what that CloudFormation template does is it starts up a, a Sage Maker Jupyter notebook for you to browse through. And I already did that because it, it takes like five minutes to start this up, and I didn't want you to have to sit there there through that. I already loaded that Jupyter notebook up, and here I'll show you how I actually got to that point. Um, within the console, um, you can do a couple things. Um, the CloudFormation template itself uh, has an output that shows what that Jupyter Notebook URL is. So if I go to CloudFormation, I'll show you that really fast. Um, here, and it's going to show me the stack. So this TextShock API, that's the CloudFormation script I just ran. And if we go to outputs over here in the CloudFormation script, it shows you right here. Okay, there's the Jupyter Notebook instance URL that that it started up for us. So I could just click on that. I could also just browse up here in services to SageMaker and it shows it there too. So nothing really surprising. And if we click on this thing, I've already got it up here and running. It, it'll it bring up this um, and it'll, uh, and so it shows us um, in this kind of Jupyter Notebook Lab um, Studio kind of thing where we can, we can run the little pieces of code and kind of see how they do. If you've never done a Jupyter Notebook they're really fun to play with if you're a programmer. Um, they give you these little snippets of code and each of them, you can run each of them kind of independently and it shows you the results. So you can see here, um, there's like a log of um, everything that it does. Um, and I'm gonna just show you a few key little pieces um, of the API calls that are particularly interesting where you can kind of look at. I'm not gonna walk through what the code does. I'm just gonna show you that it's possible. So here it just is a basic, um, uh, a basic detecting and and pulling in a text from a, uh, from a local image. So you can see that we've got this image here um, that just is some text in an image form. And here, this little chunk of code right here. This code is actually the code that will um, open the um, open the document and it called text track. It's basically one line of code right there to do the. Um, to pull the text out of the document. So really, really high level, really awesome for um, being able to uh, get results really quickly in the API calls. And then here, this is just a for loop, just running over the results here and just um, and it's just going to print out the results for us. And that's what this text right here is. This is the output from this little chunk. So if, um, after running this little chunk of code, it outputs this text right here. Um, it says Amazon Inc. is located. So, um, so there, that's just a uh, the the very basic kind of um, uh, detection of text in a document. Um, they do the same thing here. Now this is the same call showing you that you can do the same exact uh, detection from an S3 image now. So instead of storing the the image locally, we're going to pull the uh, image from an S3 bucket. That's not especially amazing. It just shows you that um, you can do it straight from the same call. So you can see here's the same call. Um, uh, now, uh, still kind of just a one-liner, but now you're specifying the um, the object in S3. So also really cool. Um, uh, this kind of is going to just show, I, I think what this is showing is what's the JSON structure of the raw data coming back, the raw results that are coming back from the detect document call. And here you can see, that's what this is right here. Here's all the JSON, the, just the gory detail of what's coming back from the um, from that call. So you can see this is, you can kind of see all this, um, all this data is what that demo that I just showed is based on. So you can see, Here's how here's how it tells like a particular piece of text here, like Amazon, for example. You can see uh, what the bounding box of that is and what the X Y location of it is and all that kind of stuff. So um, so handy if you want to get really into the details of what's coming back from text. Right. Here's an example of um, reading text that's in a two column format. So like you'd have in a research paper maybe or in a book with two columns. Um, you know. And so this shows you that that AW that 
Textract is able to discern, it, it, to discern that there are two columns of text, not just one column um, where it misinterprets, um, you know, it thinks that the, it thinks that these is just one, it blurs them all together. It can actually determine that these are two columns. So you can see here, um, uh, here, I'm right here. We didn't have to tell it that there are two columns. It's the same call. We're pulling the image from S3 and, and, and we're just going to kind of go through here. And, and this code is the code to actually print out the results. And you can see here, it pulls the first column of text, kind of hard to see here, but it's pulling the first column of text here. I can't really highlight this for some reason, but first column of text is here, and then the second column follows. So um, natural language processing, this is um, showing you, uh, specifically, it's showing you that it can uh, that it can use Comprehend, which is another service, one of um, the features of which is it can determine the sentiment of the text itself. So, for example, it can determine if it's um, negative sentiment, if it's uh, talking negatively, or if it's positive sentiment, or in this case, neutral. Comprehend Medical is a really, really cool uh, ability um, in, um, it, that's another service that's, um, that's kind of a, a, a sister service to Textract. And that here is gonna show you that we've got some patient notes maybe written by a doctor and just free form patient notes here. Um, so nothing in any kind of structure at all. And just as patients, a 40 year old mother, high school teacher um, has a uh, sleeping trouble on present dosage of clonidine, um, severe rash on the leg. So it's just free form text. It's talking about Vyvanse and clonidine, um, other things that I'm not a doctor, I don't understand any of this. So, um, but, we can kind of look down through here and after pulling the text and then running that text through Comprehend Medical, we can um, pull out some pretty interesting things out of that text and further categorize the data down from being just, just uh, raw text. It can actually now show us some categorization of that data so we can actually do way more with the data. So you can say here that it's pulled and found a specific age itself. So it says, this is a, this is a type of, 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 of data called age and it's and it's identifying that they're 40 years old and it also categorizes also really really cool that this is protected health this is phi so for hipaa uh, reasons um you know this is really really valuable um and information that you would have to code yourself if you're going to try to do this so very very difficult to do here you've got diagnoses that you can pull it's it's properly um, out, it's probably identifying that sleeping is the potential uh, having tr sleeping trouble is a diagnosis, rash is a diagnosis, um, itchy diagnosis. Now here you can see that Vyvanse and clonidine are two, it's properly labeled that these are brand names and that they're medications. So um, also really, really handy work that you would have to do yourself if you're going to try to do, um, you know, try to parse and understand this document. Hey, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Actually, if you scroll back to that, it pointed oh, sure. out something out I thought was really cool. It actually, oh, yeah. we'll go back down just a little bit, Vivance. Oh, down. Oh, Vivance. So okay, it has right Vivance as the generic name. I'm sorry, it has Vivance as the oh. brand name and Clonidine, Clonidine oh. as the generic name. So it actually does go even further. And this is kind of oh, a callback. That's cool. I, I interrupted is it, it no. goes to our, uh, our industry specific uh, analysis. So I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't even know that. Is is I guess I didn't know that. Is clonidine the generic word for Vyvanse, or is that just a different drug? I'm not sure. To be honest. Yeah, <laughs> but that is cool. I didn't even notice that either. That it that it identified it. That it's not a brand name. It's a generic name. That's yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice that. So the, uh, yeah, thanks for jumping in. Um, translate. Um, we can call the translation service the so same deal. We can pull the text out of the document, and then we can call a translation service and just line by line. So here you can see it's it's translating each of those sentences, it, it, sentences into German. Um, and you can translate it into a bunch of different languages. And uh, I think that was listed on one of John's slides, what all the, all the languages are. Um, you can do, I'm going to skip down through here. This is just talking about kind of key value pairs, pulling data that we already talked about. I'm going to skip this. Um, one of the because I wanted to show you this one thing really that I thought was really cool that it could do. Let me skip. Um, look at this, redaction. I thought this was really cool. 
So it gives you the ability to identify and then redact parts of the document back into the original document itself. So um, by uh, so we've just got an employment application here, and and let's say that we wanted because these are sensitive pieces of information. For example, we wanted to redact their address. For example, you could do the phone number too. But but here you can see that what they're doing here is they're they're basically looking for um, in code now. They're doing this in code, but they're um, looking for the uh, any any key label that came back with the word address in it, and then and then we can redact that in the document itself and end up using the display information that came back from Textract. You can you can add that redaction right back into the document. So now we can add actual imagery over the document itself and redact that information out. So um, so Textract gives you this really tight integration with the document itself and with the with the sensitivity even of data that's coming back and the, um, you know, using Comprehend, um, even doing sentiment analysis. Um, then th there's some other stuff in here. Tables, we already kind of talked about that. You can see the table data is coming back as arrays. That's pretty obvious. Um, and I think that's it. I don't want to give you scrolling headache here, so I don't want to scroll too back. Well, again, last thing I was going to say this, it does actually, will also do this on PDFs. If you've ever had to parse a PDF trying to pull out text files, it's really, really difficult to do. Um, you typically have to use APIs to do it, and it's still difficult. So this is really handy that you can just throw PDFs at, at TextTrack, and it can also pull uh, meaningful data out of a PDF. It's a little bit more complicated in code, you can see, but um, but here's an actual PDF that um, it's got loaded here. It's, I've got it scrolled off the screen. So here's the PDF. You can see it's just a it's a PDF about Amazon Extract. Um, and you can see here, it's now pulling all that data out of there in a in a way that kind of gets rid of all that PDF formatting out of there. So we're right at time, so I'm gonna call it and let, and and um, and say uh, uh, thank you for everybody coming and I'll hand it back over to uh, to Jeremy.